Welcome along to another edition of Kicking It. We are so honored to have with us uh, Dallas Mavericks legend, NBA Hall of Famer, Dirk Nowitzki. It's good to see you. Thanks for having Thank me. Thank you for being here. Excited. Sir, Excited. legend. This We're in Dallas. One. We had to ask if you'd be available. Yes. And we appreciate you making the time. Yeah, die wollen auch you. unbedingt, dass ich mit der auf Deutsch rede, weil das, die das irgendwie voll cool finden. Oh, ich weiß nicht. Okay, you know what? Yeah. That's what we do here, right? <laughs> ich wusste nicht, dass du Deutsch sprichst. Ja, ich war acht Jahre lang in Deutschland. Wo da? München, Berlin. Wow. In beiden Städte, ja. Scheiße. <laughs> um, wow, sehr yes, cool. Yes, thank you. Was it all right? Do It's I get good. a decent very rating? Good. Yeah, okay, very cool. Good. Um, I, I guess what's super interesting to me thinking about having you onto this show was the fact that we've got you, we've got Clint, right? So the best European player to ever play the game in terms of basketball, the best American player to ever play the game in terms of soccer. It's a fact, Clint. Oh, no, 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 you're going to be a fake home. <laughs> what about Landon Donovan? I don't got a statue. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> not yet. I'm never going to have a statue that comes up like that, okay? There's levels. There's levels. Is that how you feel? I mean, Incredible what he's done. I mean, hopefully one day we'll have American players that are doing well enough in big clubs in Europe that have like a statue after him. I mean, that's the equivalent to me of what he's done. Come to America where, you know, we've been the best at this game for so long to have people like him from Europe come over and take over. I mean, that's the goal. If we can have Americans do that one day in Europe. Wait, so you got a Hall of Fame, then you also got a statue. Bro. You got a statue. Uh, that's, that's crazy. crazy. I mean, that, that, and, that, and that hits a little bit different. You got a statue. It's, like, not, it's not like the Cristiano Ronaldo statue You got either. a statue, like, bro. Yeah, they like, right. fade away. Right. Right. There's been some bad statues. Yeah. Yeah. That was a little word. That was a little word. Bro. <laughs> but, but, no, but, but what? You can't take straight. Bro. That was a little word, I got to say. What means more to you, right? Like, which, because playing for the same team throughout your entire career and them to honor you in that way, to you be, like, embedded in this city, like, What's, what's more Yeah, important? I'm not really sure. I mean, everything has been fantastic in retirement. It's been like this retirement tour of stuff happening every six months. I'm getting honored somewhere else. It's been, uh, it's been wonderful and for my family and I. But it started off with the street. I mean, now I have a street in front of right. the arena. Oh, that, was, cool. that was super cool. So now my, I take my kids to the game. I'm like, take a ride on the Whiskey Way. <laughs> you, got a, you got a key to the city. Got you got a day or a week. Well, you got everything, huh? So it's, uh, it's, been, it's been wonderful. It's hard to say one thing is cooler than the next. The statue, obviously, is amazing. That will live forever. And, and, um, but it's, it's been super cool moments. And of course, I didn't really know what to expect when I got here late 90s. And then 20 some years later, now to take, drive on my street and you know, see my jersey retired and the statue. It still feels somewhat surreal uh, as a kid leaving Germany 20 some years ago. But it's been, it's been a wonderful journey and I'll try to make the best out of it. How did you know kind of when it was time, like, you know what, I've done enough, I'm proud of what I've accomplished. Was it like your body telling you or, or did you already kind of have in your mind or was it like, man, I got to be around for my kids more, my family or? I think my body told me. Um, uh, I had some issues there at the end of my ankle, which is actually really bad now. Obviously, 21 years of running up and down and jumping on the hardwoods. Um, I have some arthritis and some joints. So my last year was super tough. I missed the first 30 games. I had some, some stuff in my ankle, and then it took me forever to come back, but then it just wasn't the same. Even my last two years, I mean, when I was in the game, I just see that point guard just laughing, just call whoever I was guarding, just call him up, just put him straight in the pick and roll and just feast coming at me 100 miles an hour. I'm like, I'm like with one ankle trying to stay in front. I was like, okay, first I can't keep up. My health is not there. And I'm like, I think mentally I could have played another year, mm -hmm. but uh, it just, it would have made no sense. And when, when you say, sorry, just to think about having your jersey retired, right, your number retired, if you think about the football equivalent of that, it's crazy, right? You've got Napoli with Maradona, you'd have Ajax and Johan Cruyff, you'd have um, AC Milan and Paolo Maldini, you'd have Liberia and George Weah, like, these are incredible names. And can you think of a bigger mm -hmm. honor than somebody saying, hey, you were so important to our franchise that we're gonna, we're gonna retire your number? I was, uh, no, I mean, and a statue like Thierry Henry, I mean, there's no bigger honor than to say that you were, you were here, you dominated, you brought so much joy to the, to the sport, to, to, to this club, and you'll be remembered forever. I mean, that's, that's crazy. I mean, that's not your intentions going out. You wanna do well and you wanna make your family proud and be a kid as long as you can by playing the game you love. But, to be able to get to those heights, man, that's, that's, but the, that's but the, the number ultimate. retiring is just like, it and hits different. It hits different because it's, it's basically them saying, 
no one there can ever never replace be another you. you. Yeah. Yeah. You can never ever be replaced. Like this number, it doesn't matter whoever wears this again, it can never be you. Like that to me is like, that's heavy. That's cool, yeah. And that's that's a that's, that's a cool. dope. Something dope we'll never feel. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, <laughs> we gotta live vicariously oh, through. Yeah, man, dude, that's a great feeling, right? Um, post career, like you had a chance to travel. Um, did those travels take you to London? Get a chance to see Arsenal games or anything like that? I did. I did see an Arsenal game finally when uh, Uzi was still there. Yeah. Uh, the other Germans had left, um, Podolski and Mertesacker and all these guys. But uh, yeah, I, I saw him. Uh, actually, I saw Thierry there, and yeah. he, uh, I think I think we we're sitting in his box that night and. It was good. It was fun. It was good to be there, and I think they beat Man U that day. So it was a, it was a good all the way around. Makes yeah. That's her team. Oh, God. Too many Arsenal I'm fans sorry. here again. Too many Arsenal fans in the mix. Here, here. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you mentioned Thierry. You also mentioned Podolski, Schweinsteiger, so Bayern Munich guys as well. Obviously, Arsenal play Bayern. Quarterfinals of the Champions League. Who do you pull for in that situation? Because you say you identify with both clubs, right? Yeah, I mean, you know, growing up, I didn't really have one team. You know, I, my dad didn't really have one team, so we kind of hopped around. We were, we were situated. We didn't have a, a first Bundesliga team, so Frankfurt was close, Nuremberg was close, Munich was two hours away, so I kind of like identify with the entire area. Mm -hmm. I used to go to games everywhere. Uh, so I don't really have one team, but I do like Bayern over the years now. I met most of these players and Müller and Neuer and I mean, mm -hmm. all these guys. So. I think I'm gonna have to pull for Bayern. Bayern. I mean, oh. yeah. It's and jumping ship, boys. Oh, no. <laughs> no, I'm not jumping ship. I grew up in Germany, right? Sure. Yeah. I, I mean, I grew up in Germany. That one so hits different. Yeah. <laughs> but I do like Arsenal when they play, obviously in the Prem. Um, it started with really with the Invincibles a long time ago, and then, but we didn't really catch that much Premier League. It was all Bundesliga in, in Germany growing up, and but the Invincibles they were, had a fun team to watch, and then. My wife's twin brothers play soccer, and they played in the Prem, so every weekend we would watch the Prem. They played in Swansea and Blackburn and who else? Uh, Norwich. Norwich. I played Norwich. against both of them. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. Good, so, good, uh, good guys. Yeah, so, so then we were, like, obsessed watching Prem every weekend, and then we and Steve Nash touch. is a Spurs guy, right? Who obviously you're He's cool with. He's a Spurs with. guy. How did that friend. go with the two of you? Uh, yeah, we, we text every now and then when they play. Uh -huh. we might put a little friendly wager North on. North London rivalry. Uh, yeah, exactly. But Tottenham was getting the better out of the last few years, but Arsenal now turned the corner again. So yeah, it's been it's been fun talking a lot of trash to him. Yeah, he's definitely diehard Spurs, and that's what me and Steve actually originally connected when I first got here in '98, '99. We had, you know, he had European roots with his with his parents, and you know, he loves soccer. So it gave us, I think, something to talk about, something to bond over, and, and then I'd go over to his place, we'd watch some soccer whenever we can catch it, and so that's how really our, our friendship really started was was over talking soccer. Steve is pretty nice too, isn't he? Yeah, Steve can play. Good, yeah, yeah, he, he can play. He's, yeah. yeah, he's. I mean, he's a sick athlete. No matter, he's one of those annoying guys. Whatever he, he does. Just does <laughs> Do you ever play in those? He doesn't he put on regular charity games? Yeah. yeah. Right? Do you ever play in those? I played in his in New York one year. Uh, it was Do you get fun, picked? Everybody wants and, Dirk and, on their team. Yeah, I was the last pick. I, think. <laughs> I, was, I was the last pick, and then uh, and then I couldn't. I didn't score. I missed a couple, and then I was so thirsty at the end. I shot it every time, and then they called me. I was like, "Stop, play for the team!" But what I just I? wanted to score a game and a goal in his game. And I, I went home with a bagel, and I think we lost. And <laughs> <laughs> I was all the way tough, uh, all around tough. That sounds like very familiar to someone else I know. You were thirsty in the oh, game? Oh, bruh. <laughs> bruh. What are you talking bruh. about? Hey, he's thirsty in everything. <laughs> <laughs> what you talking about, bruh? The missed chances. I want to just keep shooting. Yeah, I was, I was like, damn, I've, I've heard that somewhere before. Going home this with a bagel. Going home with a bagel. <laughs> I'm not going home with no bagel. I'll tell you that right now. Wait, but so, so Steve is a... Uh, He's a part owner of Vancouver. There's a lot. There's been a lot of influx of athletes, you know, looking at soccer as an investment, investing in different teams, whether it's in MLS teams or in Europe. Is that on your radar at all? Anything that you're interested in? Yeah, sure. I mean, if that's if that's something, something comes comes up and it's the right situation, sure. Yeah. I'm more, I'm, like I said, I'm always interested in soccer. Yeah. I don't really understand the whole, you know, investment world and all the numbers. 
I invest with people that I like, that are trustworthy, and so if something you know ever should happen that yeah. comes along and it's a great fit for me, then yeah, why not? One question, would you invest in his, his rap career after hearing it? Yeah. <laughs> That's a pass. Hey, come on, hey, man. And for that, I'm out. <laughs>Take you a minute to feel like you belonged? Did you feel like you really had to earn that? Yeah, I mean, it was hard at the beginning. You know, I, I got here, I've always lived at home, and then, you know, get thrown into that. I didn't know what to expect. Now there was no social media, there was no internet. I had no idea what I was walking into here. And so it, was, it took a while for me to get adjusted. My school English was horrible, so I didn't really, it was a language barrier. You weren't so good at school? I went to school. No, I said you weren't good at school. <laughs> No, I, I mean, I wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's talk about something. Okay. No, my, my English wasn't, it was more, we learned like Oxford English, so right. proper. British and, English. British English. Yes. And so I came here, I, I didn't understand a word, <laughs> what was happening. And so there was the language barrier, there was culture differences, and then, and then the, the, the style of play was just so different. I mean, these guys were athletes and running, and I'm like, we used to play like once a week, and I came, we played four or five games a week. I mean, the whole thing was just, a lot at the beginning for a 19, 20 year old to take in. And it really took me like a whole year to kind of get the routine, have a full training camp and, and f you know, feel welcome here, get a house, get a car and just get situated. I mean, I, I think you're <clears throat> the best international player to, to come over here to the, to the States and like- Appreciate it. But there's so, a lot take, of guys but, coming but, now. But to me, I'm just curious, like when you grew up in Germany, like, how was that development and, and was it kind of weird for you because growing up in the States, like playing soccer in the States, everybody always looked at me like, bruh, like why aren't you playing basketball, baseball or football? Did you kind of get looks like that growing up around your friends and stuff? You know, they obviously saw that I was super freakishly tall and you know, uh, the kind of basketball sort of came easy to me. So I played tennis and, and uh, a little handball, you know, people don't really know handball here, but it's a great sport. Uh, in Europe, it's big, and so I played those two sports, and then I was just getting too tall for tennis, and I don't know, I was always shy, so people made fun of my height, and I, I just felt comfortable around the basketball guys. They were all my size, and nobody asked me, how's the air up there, and all that, <laughs> all that nonsense that you don't want to hear when you're 13, 14 years old, and so, yeah, it, was a, it wasn't really a huge sport in Germany at the time. Obviously, everything is, is soccer, and tennis was big at the time with Steffi Graf, Boris Becker, uh, but, but basketball was sort of flying under the radar, but there were, there were some good clubs and some good teams. Did and you have to pay to be a part of those clubs? Like in the States, growing up, you have to pay to be a part of it. It's like a pay-to-play kind of system. It's just now that we're kind of seeing what they're doing in Europe with like, whether it's MLS teams, and then now they're having academies and they're starting to pick up that bill for those kids and give them the opportunity, if you're good enough to play, that you can play. What was that like? Yeah, you had to join the club. You okay. had to join the club. Your parents had to pick that up. And I'm not sure if back in the days there were some exceptions they made. I, I, I can't really remember. Uh, but no, no, you had to join the club with your, with your annual fees, and then you were able to play really any sport that you wanted in, inside the club, if the club offered that sport. And so I, I played actually handball and, and tennis at a different club, but they didn't offer a junior basketball program. So we had to uh, join another club for basketball. Did you, did you ever play any football? Because four years before they win the World Cup, Franz Beckenbauer, you're born in 78. Yeah. It feels like you're coming into a, a Germany that's all about the game. Booming. Like, were you interested in the sport at all? I, I was super interested and I loved it and I watched it growing up. Uh, I just was, was size 16 shoes. Uh, <laughs> they didn't try to goalie, win man. Nets? You could have yeah. been a goalie. I could have. I wasn't the most coordinated. And uh, I mean, everybody in Germany kicks on the street and in recess. You take a little ball and you kick to each other. So, I mean, I kicked a little bit, but I never actually joined the club and, and was like, this is, I'm gonna try to do this sport. It was just too hard for me. I didn't really have the, the coordination for it, my long legs, so I was, uh, that was a sport that was actually, I was struggling at. Uh, but kicking on the street, kicking with friends uh, was, was definitely decent enough. I can, I can keep it up maybe 10 times in a row. Hey, that's good, it's more than Mo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Take it straight today, man. It's, it's like, y'all mad at me when I'm not here, you heal me when I'm here. Hey, we, like, hey, we like, missed you, can't we, can't we, we missed you. I can't win. We missed no, but, you, bro. But, but uh, you know, getting back to what Clint was talking about, 
When you retired, did you almost like become an ambassador for the NBA in terms of like when foreign players are having interest to come over, are they reaching out to you like, hey, what's it like? What's the transition like? You know, what should I expect as I, when I get my feet on the ground here and how can I hit the ground and run? You know what I mean? They don't really. You know, nowadays, I think the, these kids are different, as you know, with social media. They, they just come here with a different swag already that, that I didn't have back in the days. Um, but they, they, they come in, they know what to expect, and they, they've seen all these clips on, on social media and the internet and YouTube and God knows what. Uh, they, I mean, I played with Luca my last year was his first year, and, and he barely asked me any questions. He right. was already so savvy. I mean, he's been a pro since he's like 12 years old in Madrid. And, uh, he just knew, knew how to handle himself and play, and he plays way smarter than, than his age, so. I, f I feel like you broke down so many barriers that, like, they don't have to break down. Like, you earn so much respect that they, they're like, okay, we, we started, we can respect more of foreign players coming in because, you know, when you came in, I'm not trying to put words in your mouth, but did it almost feel like, all right, let's see what this international player can do, you know? That's kind of how I felt. Yeah. Like, I couldn't be as good as another, um, you know, English player. I had to be better. Like, there had to be a significant difference for me to play over them. Did you, how, did you feel any of that? Yeah, I mean, there were some that made it, obviously, in the 90s with Schrempf, and, you know, there are some other uh, European legends, Kukoc and Divac, and all these guys sort of little paved the way for me. And then, uh, and then when I came in, I mean, I heard those noises when I was guarding somebody in, in my rookie year in front of the opposing bench. They're like, go at him, he's soft. Oh. <laughs> I mean, I, I hear all that stuff, but. That's what you know. I do in training with big guys. <laughs> was, that, was that the impression? Was that the kind of, kind of like the judgment on European players that they were soft? Yeah, they come in shooting jumpers and playing facing the basket. They don't want to go underneath and mix it up. And so that was. That was that was the, you know, the, the, the reputation we had, that they're a little softer, which, which is fine. They still are. Um, most of the international players are facing the basket. They're skilled. They can dribble. They can shoot. They can bring the ball up. So uh, there wasn't really the physically overpowering, and that's why the, it was, they were a little soft. Did you care about fitting in culturally? You know how, like, swag and style is a big part of NBA culture, right? What, what is everybody walking into the arena in, all of that? Did you care? about any of that stuff? Did you come from Germany and it's all hip hop culture and all of that. Did you feel like you fitted and did you want to fit? I mean, I, I, I was a little 90s hip hop guy, you know, I had, my little, I had the little white <laughs> pants going and a little, uh -huh. the, the white shirts and uh, I, had, I had all that. And, uh, but yeah, back in the day, at the beginning, we didn't have a dress code. So anything, I just usually had a pair of jeans and uh, just something leger on, and some guys made statements, some guys didn't care at all, and then it was got, it got a little too loose there when, when AI had about 18 chains on and his <laughs> throwback jerseys, and, and then, we, then actually David Stern stepped in and was like, okay, this is getting out of control, it's getting out of hand, we need to do something, and then came the dress code, and then, mm -hmm. you know, we had to wear suits or at least slacks and, and button down to every game, and uh, that was... That was really the first time I had to own a suit and, and some, some nice clothes before. It was all baggy jeans and, uh, and sweatsuits. And, uh, so Dude, was, the suits were time. all baggy back then. The suits were baggy, yeah. I still have some just to, to laugh at them. Looking at them <laughs> and like, did, did, you, uh, did you ever get caught in a game? Because you seem you know, super humble, quiet, but were you like, you know what, I'm going I'm to start talking some trash. Did anyone get that out of you? There is, yeah, over the 21 years it happens, you know, there are in, in emotional moments. But it's usually not me starting. Something must have happened yeah. or, you know, somebody, I felt like I got fouled. And then uh, and I, I talked to the ref and then he gets in, like, stop whining or you're soft or something like that. And then, okay, let's, let's have a conversation. Right, yeah, <laughs> we, we can do that. Was, and there, then, was there a player that actually... You know that you you knew that was coming every time. Like Kevin Garnett was Kevin that guy. Garnett. Oh yeah, I mean his <laughs> reputation. He's got that reputation, but it's actually true. I mean he was he was one of a kind. He was he was always just so fired up, and and you know he always wanted to make his mark against, especially against the player that he was keep competing against at like the four spot. So, I mean there were there was a night when when I first got in the league and we played in Minnesota. And he, I just come and walk on the court. I'm like, oh, that's KG. And he's just like, 
you mud, I'm gonna bust it. Right. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, okay. I just wanted to shake his hand, and then, and then we never. We actually, I don't think we ever shook hands pregame. He's just that intense. He didn't want to even show you any oh, weakness. Wow. So mm. uh, that's just who KG was. One time we played him. <clears throat> I think he was in Boston at that time. He was so rattled. I had scored a few. So there was a timeout. I'm getting up from my timeout. He's all the way. He had left his timeout early and was standing outside our huddle just waiting on me. As soon as I got up, he's uh, everywhere I walked, he followed me with his nose on my <laughs> nose. I'm like, this guy is just crazy. He just he wanted to pick me up as soon as I left the huddle. And uh, I mean, he, is, he was one of a kind, but you know, uh, it's just it's his, his will to compete was just one of the best ever. So he's, he's I'm a Celtics guy, so I like, I yeah, like hearing yeah, that. <laughs> Can we talk about Hall of Fame? Because you got inducted 2023. You got inducted 2021, I think. 2022. 2022, yeah. my bad, apologies. Yeah, nice. So I watched both of y'all's speeches over the last couple of days. You seem very put together, bro. You were emotional. I was emotional. <laughs> where, 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 where's the soccer Hall of Fame? It's here. It's in Dallas. Oh, yeah. Shoot, I, cut that out. I, yeah. should probably, <laughs> I should probably know this. But I was emotional because, like, my grandparents were there. They're in their 90s. I mean, they could be the last time. Of course, it's in the Dallas Stadium. Yeah. I've oh, been now it. you remember. I've been <laughs> in it. I've been in it. Of course, I've been in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, of course. Yeah, yeah but no, it was it was a special moment. You know what I mean? You had all your family there. Your kids were there. Your, all the people that helped you along the way. I was in Texas, and I think just having all the people that were in the struggle with me to like chase my dream is like thanking them for that moment and sharing that. So it was hard to dang. Keep the tears back a little bit. And once you get going, it's like Are you it's trying not to make eye contact? Because you know if I look at you, I'm going to crack? Or were you trying to honor them in that moment? I mean, and... I tried, but it didn't last long. And then it just, I, I could never get right. Like, it was, <laughs> <laughs> it was like, it's like one of the ones that was choked bad, up. And it's like, it was bad. Me, me but group. hey, I, I, it was from the heart. And I'm glad it's over with. I mean, you feel the pressure when you're giving a speech because it's like, you want to thank everybody. You don't want to leave anybody out. You want to look back and say, you know what, I, 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 I did a good job with that. Like, did you feel a pressure when you gave your speech? Oh, I was nervous for weeks. Yeah, I mean, I've, all summer long, I knew when the date was. And uh, man, you hit yeah. that very well. Well, you know, I practiced. I practiced a while, and then, and I think I was so focused, and I kind of knew what I wanted to say. I didn't want it. so I actually, I, I had no time to, to get emotional because I was so into Locked my in. speech and I wanted to make sure. I, I, and then I, I had to breathe a little bit when it got to my parents and family. Uh, then it got a little That's dicey, but I was, you know, the yoga breathing <laughs> every now and then. Uh, there, there's some deep breaths, I think that helped. But uh, no, I got, I got through it pretty good. But I had a, you know, when you have a plan in mind and, I, and, and then we had a, uh, a little teleprompter too. So that helped oh, me keep in my thoughts, yeah, yeah. So. Don't, don't don't show that, but uh, <laughs> we were definitely cheating, and I, I can keep my thoughts together, and, and so that, was, that definitely helped. You obviously mentioned like some of the Bayern players that you've gotten to know over the years. Um, do you do you, are athletes athletes, or do you feel like soccer players move really different to basketball players? No, I, I, at the end of the day, I think athletes have respect for each other, and you know they all know the grind, they know what people go through, and so there's yeah, there's mutual respect there, and. Um, yeah, there's relationships there when when the opportunity is there, so. There's a weird story that at your bachelor party, which was in Las Vegas, I believe, Wayne well, Rooney. Who told you all that? Was the, I don't know. Hey, <laughs> hey, where's the lead? Hey, hey, what happened, source, source what happened there? What happened at that bachelor party in Vegas, man? Wow. We okay. got researchers so out Rooney here, So Rooney just happened to be in the club, or did you say what's up? I'm not sure if... Uh, this was already at a later stage at that point at the, of the night. Uh, I can't remember <laughs> if we went over there and took a photo. I, and obviously all my U.S. guys are like, who is that? I was like, you recognize him immediately? Yeah. 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 Was that pre-hair plugs? I can't. It must have been. I think he was, I can't remember. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Why you went there? <laughs> I can't remember now. Oh, oh man, man. Wayne took her straight. Two foot. <laughs> no, we'll take that out. We'll take that out. <laughs> what, what was it like for you to uh, hold your country's flag at the Olympics? Because that's where, that's where I initially met you. Um, you getting to represent your country at the Olympics and, and host, hoist the flag. 
It was always a dream of mine, you know, growing up watching the Olympics, you know, 88, 92, Barcelona, dream team. I was, it was a dream of mine to represent Germany one time, and then we never made it. We didn't make it to Sydney in 2000. We didn't make um, Athens in 2004. And so when, when we made it in 08 to Beijing, it was like, this is actually some of the most emotional I've, I've become in my career was, it was that moment when we made it. And, and then, you know, it was just everything I ever dreamed of, sleeping in a village, you know, getting to know all these, these athletes. Is what they say about the Olympic Village true, that it's kind of like a big mm -hmm. hookup zone? I don't remember that. What do you guys uh, remember? That's a I, 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 remember I remember our coach, we came in, our what coach kind of question, me out. <laughs> what kind of question is that? I've always just been intrigued, yeah. there's something yeah. they say about the no, Olympic we had, Village, we had right? No, we had, we had fun. I've like, never got to We were go. doing like, mm, I'll see what's going on. No, they took us out the village. We, we literally like came in, our coach was like, the, the Swedish girls team was in our in our dorm, oh, and then well. and the Brazilian volleyball team was the next. And our coach went, nope, <laughs> two hours we're out. Well, we'll find us a hotel. Was in Sweden, right next to it. And the time time I was playing in Toronto, you were in Sweden, and I don't know. He just said, yeah, we're not staying here. Yeah, <laughs> took us we're out. out. <laughs> yeah. He said, yeah, we gone. We gone. What, what was that party like after you won? You finally got the championship because it felt like that was talked about. The yeah, I, I think there was the got. first night in Miami was was cool. I mean, you know, we had Lil Wayne in the club, and I'm like, yeah, Lil Wayne, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> and so, uh, that that was super cool. And, and Cubes bought a, a freaking champagne bottle. It was like this high for like a hundred grand, and so everybody had to like <laughs> shoot out of that champagne bottle. The, the first night was epic, and I gotta say, we were an older team. You know, we were. Most of our starting fives, and then a couple of guys on the bench were all over 30. We were completely drained after. We were so tired. You know, I, I think we partied a little harder in 06 after the initial disappointment. Uh, we partied to make forget what we did, that we lost the final, than we actually did when we won. I don't know. Guys were old. Guys had families at this point. You know, we had a couple good nights, but uh, not, not really what, what you would envision after putting in 10 plus years and then finally getting to the top. What do you like in the club? I can't imagine Clint in the club. What you like? So, I don't know, it depends, you know? <laughs> you don't know what you're gonna get, like a box of chocolates. So, um, no, nah, I mean. You but, dance, you move, or you kind of like, you stand in mean, the know, bar? I mean, you know, I just stay, you know, to the stay basics, the you know? Little two step? Two step, but you know what I mean? I'm out, I'm out, out there pop, lock, and dropping <laughs> and stanky legging like my buddy. Stanky <laughs> legging. <laughs> Going back to Germany and international, kind of talking about Olympics, uh, how much do you follow the international game? How much do you follow Germany or the US for that matter? Euros this summer. Euros this summer in Germany. Uh, Will you so go to any games? I'm gonna try uh, mid-June. I think the first game is in Frankfurt. Uh, then they actually have a game on my birthday on that 19th. I think that one's in Stuttgart. I'm gonna try to catch one of those in, 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 uh, in, uh, in June, but... Yeah, I still follow all the I mean, the big tournaments, everybody follows in Germany, you know, the Euros, the, the World Cup, obviously. Um, so, yeah, I'm trying to catch as many games as I can. And now that we have the World Cup here in 26 in Dallas, yeah. Texas, so looking forward to that. But you were a part of bringing games to Dallas, right? You campaigned for that. Yeah, they asked me a few years ago whether I want to be involved and kind of sort of be an ambassador a little bit, if you will, and, and uh, for Dallas sports and for for this for the for this Metroplex and bringing some games here. I said, sure, sure. I love love soccer, love the World Cup growing up, and uh, that, that was a natural fit. And then I went out to the the announcement the other day, a couple mm -hmm. weeks ago, uh, where we took a little bit of disappointment when we losing out in the final. Yeah, losing to out in the Jersey final. To New Jersey as well. Yeah, yeah. so we, we were I'll all take there. It, Jerry yeah. Jones was there. So all the mayors from all the towns were there, and we were standing there like this. And then they announced Dallas got the most games with with nine games, and I'm like, that doesn't really sound good. And then uh, and then sure enough, a couple minutes later, they said we didn't get the final. We, so uh, we we tend to have a tradition on this show that kind of we talk about adversity and, and some of the, the toughest moments of your career or life. What was that for you? Uh, Charlie took such a pivot there. Yeah, yeah, bro. That was, that was I didn't know where you're going with that either. But. You were we have both. a tradition on this show. <laughs> what just okay. happened right now? Um, Call Charlie Dr. Phil. <laughs> I think... 
I think the hardest years for me were 06 and 07. 06, we were up 2-0 in Miami in the finals and went down there and, and all wheels came off. We ended up losing the final series 4-2. That was Dwayne Wade's coming out party back in the days. This is where, you know, he made uh, his career and started, started from there. And then, um, and then the next year, uh, my MVP year, 07, we won like 68 games. We were heavy favorites to win it all. And we run into the Warriors' hot team back in the days, and we lose in the first round of my MVP year. So those two back-to-back -back years were, man, I, I took that hard. I took that. I was embarrassed. I felt like I let the whole city down, the whole the fans, the, uh, the, uh, my teammates. And so I, I took that very hard. I was embarrassed. I didn't want to leave the house for a couple of weeks. So those were probably my low points of, of my career. Is that what made it hard to get past Trinidad and, T and Tobago? Because you, you didn't have that opportunity to reorient yourself, right? Because you know, okay, there is this is it for me, essentially, World Cup career. I, I probably don't have another shot at this. Yeah, I mean, it was towards the end, right? Um, my goal was to try to make it to the 2018 World Cup and then kind of retire after that. And then, oh, you okay? And we weren't able to mm -hmm. to, to get that accomplished. So um, once the team didn't qualify, it was kind of like a rebuilding phase. They got rid of Bruce. They had an interim coach in, and they were work, focusing on the youth and developing them for the future. And like I talked about, it had been nice to have another game after all the years of service. Not not a send off game, but just one more game to be back in the states to say, you know, that was that was my last game in my memory, as opposed to one of the biggest failures of U.S. soccer's um, history in terms of not qualifying for the World Cup. But do you relate it, to what Dirk's saying when he's saying, "I didn't want to go out the house. I didn't want to show my face." A little bit, but you couldn't. Like. You know, I, you feel that way, but it's like you still had the season to go, right? And we ended up still getting to the finals, and then we lost the finals that year, too. So it's like, damn, bro, like <laughs> the double whammy. Was that enough adversity talk for you? Can we go back to normal programming? Yeah, we're good. <laughs> oh, I, I, I know what I wanted to say. Uh, I never got the chance to, to thank you. There was a retirement video that was done by Seattle, and you were on there, and... You know, you had some nice things to say about my career, so I always appreciate that. So, uh, Wait, how did you. that connection come? Why were you on his retirement video? That's a good question. Why did I Probably ask? someone reached out to him, and he's like, who's that? And he's like, all right, fuck it. <laughs> 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 hey, Clint, <laughs> hey, great career, man. I hope you enjoy retirement. Hey, no, Kobe he was, was he on was that <laughs> as well. You know, may, may you rest in peace, and um, yeah. it was special. You know, I, I, would, I would, you know, wouldn't think that y'all would really know about, like, what was going on, I guess, with my career. So it, was, uh, it, made, it made me feel good, so I appreciate that. No, no, you're welcome. What are your memories of playing against Kobe? To what extent did you consider him a, a rival? So, you know, it wasn't real. I never made a big secret. I was a big Kobe fan, even while we played against each other. Uh, felt like how he approached the game. To me, he was uh, the complete package. You know, he had the killer instinct, he had the athleticism, he had the skill level. Uh, so to me, he was like, he was, he embodied everything that, that you need to be a, a dominant force. He was a, a complete package, and I got to know him a little bit in the All-Star games, and and uh, just treated me really well. And I think there was some some mutual respect there. So uh, I was I was I was a big fan. And uh, of course, that was a tragedy, um, and you know that, uh, I still think about him all the time. I watch clips all the time, and uh, he was just a great great player. Do you sit and watch YouTube clips? Every now and then, yeah, yeah. When, when, when something comes to my mind or, I mean, we played him one time. I, I do have to talk about that all the time. We played in L.A. one time. This was 06, maybe, I want to say. And um, he had one of those heater nights. I mean, he just couldn't miss. And so he scored, I want to say, 63 or 62 in three quarters. And we as a team scored 61. So he had <laughs> outscored our entire team by himself. I mean, he had everything going. Floaters, one on three in transition. Uh, he shot a three left hand. He was kind of stuck in the corner. He turned around, shot a three left hand. And we're like, come on. Turn around, whap, bottoms. Uh, I'm like, it was that kind of night. Where does he rank for you? I mean, I'm, I'm a Jordan you, guy. I'm yeah, a but, Jordan guy, but to me, he's, uh, he's the closest thing we've ever gotten to see to, to MJ. It's just the way he played. Same grit, the same killer instinct. Um, so uh, to me, he's, he's right there with, uh, with MJ. You know, the, if I look at the, the two guards, and it, was, it will always be Kobe and, and MJ. I got to ask you, because this, this is 
the time that uh -oh. I love to ask players. When yeah, have a sip, because we don't know. <laughs> yeah. We yeah. never know what's coming next. Yeah. Yeah. No, what's about to be said. You get the opportunity to play against MJ. Mm. Like I asked Steve, what was that moment? You come on the court, you're playing against MJ. Your first moment playing against Michael Jordan. That's what, actually a funny, funny story. What happened? We were in Washington and I got to play him and it was so cool. Actually, he guarded me a couple of times on the block and I'm trying to give him every move I had in my head. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like spinning, I'm like behind the back. And I was just super hyped. It was just, you know, watching him in the game, how he acts, how he calls over the ref and just cussing him out because it's <laughs> just, just learning stuff and just watching him, how he acts on the court was just, uh, it was amazing. Similar question, but soccer, Messi, Ronaldo, where do you sit on that debate? I know that's that's a heated one huh, for everyone. Uh, I'm I'm a messy guy. Hey. Uh, I'm a messy guy. Uh, I don't know how he carries himself, uh, how he plays. He's a little super quick, super fast. Ronaldo to me, the shirt off and the hey hey look at me. It's just not. <laughs> it's just not my style. It's not my style. Uh, messy to me is is way more low key and 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 that, that I could identify more with that. But that's, I don't want to take anything away from, from Ronaldo. This is just a, a personal, you know, opinion. What about you guys? How about, well, I want to ask you. Well, I want to hear that first. Okay. Yeah. Messi's more of a complete player, but I do have a soft spot. He likes the shirt off. Right? All right. Yeah. I don't like that, but hey, <laughs> you can't deny what he, what he did. Oh, for Man sure. United and, yeah. and, 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 sure, and Real though. Madrid. Who have you all played against? Can't go wrong. I played, against, I played against both. You did? Yep. Played against? Uh, Messi. 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 Uh, if we're talking about international football, Germany always just strikes me as a team that comes different when it comes to tournaments. It's just there's such a, a strong Especially mentality like around penalties, them. Especially like penalties, like having that mentality of like, we're gonna win, we're prepared. Like how they do in penalty shootouts over like history has been, would y'all say like one of the top teams? I mean, I, I yeah, but I also I agree with you. There's just certain like a certain aura aura that even like German clubs in Champions League, like Bayern Munich, despite whatever's happening in the league, it's a draw that you're kind of like, I don't know if I want to, like for Arsenal. Oh, you didn't want Bayern? I don't know, because like, I'm like, I'm going back on my words now. I, <laughs> I, I, I didn't want them because there's, there's that aura around them, right? There's just like that pedigree that's attached to them. They know how to, they know how to succeed in tournaments. How many World Cups have they won internationally? Germany? Germany? I think three. we got three or four. 14. 54, 74, 90, 14. 14, 14. Yeah, 14. 14. See, they, man, you know. Bro, bro. <laughs> you know your on, style, man. I ain't gonna lie. He's pretty good. Well, how many oh, Champions yeah. League has Bayern Munich won? You know that one? All these pop quiz questions from Hey, when, come when on, man. I'm not trying to test you. I don't know. Point. <laughs> He's not testing you. Is it three? Yeah, it's like, hey, I'm, I'm just asking Google. Is it three or four? I don't care. Do you I don't know? know. You don't need to answer these questions. This guy's just throwing uh, shit out. No, no, it's I'm like impressed. It. Honestly, I'm impressed. But you know, it's actually funny. Germany has, after 2014, we haven't gotten our stuff together the last 10 years. It's been 10 years now. I don't know if we kept the team together too long, we missed, you know, sprinkling in the new guys, or maybe they were over Yogi Love. I'm not quite sure what's happening. I think it's like overcoaching, not maybe giving them like more of that free-flowing yeah. style. Yeah, I have, I have no idea. But now we changed coaches, now we, I mean, I don't know, we haven't, we haven't looked good. So people are a little worried for the Euro Cup in, in, at home. Especially hosting it, yeah. Because we got the talent, yeah. I mean, Musiala, and I mean, all these guys, we got, we, got, we got good players. It's just we haven't been able to, Do you to rate put, put a good product out. Huh? Do you rate Nagelsmann? Do you not? I Feels mean, like a loaded question. Yeah. Do I not rate yeah. Nagelsmann? I, I think he's still unproven. I, I think when you get the international job at Germany, the pressure's on, especially home, to win. And for him, you get sacked from Bayern. I don't think he should have been sacked from Bayern. He, he hadn't lost a Champions League match. Yeah. I think it was, he was 15 games unbeaten at that point, and they sacked him because of his style, apparently, and the way he was communicating. But uh, I don't know if, if he's the right guy for this German side. How do you feel? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I guess the jury's still out. But if I'm, they offered you Jurgen Klopp or Julian Nagelsmann, who would you go for? I mean, Klopp was my guy. Yeah. I mean, that's that's <laughs> no no disrespect to Nagelsmann, but uh, Klopp is my, is my guy. Uh -huh. Yeah. yeah. And there's rumors that he actually is going to take over the German national team. Okay. Yeah. All so right. which would be interesting. And then it's obviously not a full time job. Maybe he can relax a little bit more with his family, and then. So there there is that rumor, but who knows? I mean.
And it's actually sad to see him leave Liverpool now. Used to Same. love him in Dortmund, just his style. He's so invested. He's a player's coach. Players love him. And so, yeah. He's going to be missed for sure in the game. Mm -hmm. After accomplishing everything that you've done, it seems like you've, you've done everything. Like, what is what is like your passions now? What's your side quest? What's the what's the stuff you're getting into? So I still I love tennis. So I, I play a lot of tennis now. Um, and then we do we do travel a lot since you know we all of us always say we travel the world without really seeing much. So it's always focused. Always, you know, can't even go to a museum the day before the game. I don't want to walk around for two hours, take my legs away, and so. Now I enjoy like being a tourist all over the world. We have three young children. We travel the world. We go to Africa. We go to Europe all the time, uh, and we just do fun trips. Went to Australia last year for six weeks with the kids. So I don't know. I want to show them the world. I want them to. to Are they know, into sports? They do sports. They play tennis. The boys play a little soccer. Um, my daughter does gymnastics too, and so. But mostly they all do tennis. They love it. How do you find traveling with kids? Because Clint's got six of them, and, and they can't. His travel is way different than mine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm falling on a budget, OK? <laughs> you got six kids? Yeah. I got fixed. Yeah. There's no more. We, we figured out what the problem was. But real talk, <laughs> you don't want to. You don't want to go anywhere unless you can drive that pretty much, pretty right? Much, because pretty otherwise, much. It's, just, it's just so much to carry. Whether it's car seats, <laughs> stroller. You know, you actually have to carry them. Like it's well, what it's ages so much. you got going? Pick an age. It's probably one of the. <laughs> <laughs> it's 15, 13, uh, 11, 8, 3, and 1. Three boys, three girls. So, yeah. I can't even imagine doing a trip to Australia. How long of a flight that would be oh, yeah, on, and then getting that's... there, and how am I going to keep them alive with all that's like crocodiles, spiders, and everything that's there? It's like, yeah, no way. No, we, at three, I was like, okay, this is the third one was born right at the beginning of the season, November, and then so the entire season, I was like, you know, short nights, and I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm done. Yeah. So I don't, I can't imagine having six. There's just no way. There's no way. You built different. How, how important like, do you think like, your wife has been to your career? So we met, so she thinks I owe her the championship. So we <laughs> met, of course, uh, we met in uh, uh, 2009, 2010. Uh, and so, and then we won the championship, uh, obviously, a year after that. So then we got married in 2012. So we've been yeah, we're married over 10 years already, time flies. But yeah, I mean, I always had a small circle, but the circle was always, you know, 100% behind me. And it's obviously wifey, kids, and my family in Germany, and my coach, my mentor that was always there for everything I needed. Mm. Sounds weird, right? But do you think she gave you street cred, like being a woman of color? Did, did that I, give I, you I like? Do, I do get that at times, and then I started to come with, you know, with the the the, the to go play with the foil <laughs> over into every, <laughs> to every game. He's so got I, invited to the cookout. I still, yeah, I still <laughs> get those on Twitter every now and then. Somebody brings it back. Oh, here he goes, Dirk is with the, with his to go plate. Uh, so I, yeah, I did. I did get. What was in the plate? What would she give you? I was just basically just healthy food. At the end of my career, I wanted to eat healthy. I, I wanted to know exactly what was what was in my food, and so. It was really just healthy food. It wasn't mm -hmm. like I was carrying a bunch of ribs and uh, and cheese <laughs> <laughs> and collard greens or whatever you say. Uh, no, it was just it was healthy stuff that I knew what was what was what what, what the stuff was and what it was cooked with. And looking back now, I probably should have had somebody else carry it in or <laughs> I don't know. But this is uh, at the time, it's just, it's just what I did. You, do you have any interest in coaching? Team wise, I don't think so. You know dealing with all these personalities, holding speeches, motivating guys, it's just not my thing. Like, what my coach has done with me, like an uh, individual coach, shooting coach, I can see that. If, yeah. I, if I find, like, some young guy that wants to learn how to play, how to shoot, uh, I think that could be a super fun project. Take him on, show him everything that I know, uh, passing on the knowledge I gained over 20 years. I think that, uh, that's... What about front office? Front office is a grind. Uh, I always thought I'm going to go right in the management when I'm done, and and then just being around last year, uh, it's it's a full time job. I mean, it's it's no breaks. You get calls on Christmas. You travel all the time, and now that we still have young kids, I don't 
I'm actually in a good place right now. I'm my own boss. I can do what I want. I can go in the office when I when I want. Uh, we have still have some charity. I have a foundation in Germany, a foundation here. Um, I'm on the board of, of FIBA, which is the same as FIFA, just for basketball. It sits in Switzerland, so I go to Switzerland a couple times a year. So, so I always thought I'm gonna go. It's no brainer. As soon as I'm done, I'll be in management, learning that, maybe assistant GM, kind of learning the ropes. Now that I've been away from the game a couple of years, I'm like, this is, this is actually pretty nice. Having time with the kids, being there every weekend, with soccer games, tennis. Uh, no stress, no drama. No stress, no drama, life. no agents calling me uh, that you don't want to deal with anyways. The agents are the worst. <laughs> uh, do, you, and, and do, so, do your kids struggle with the pressure of being your kids? I think they're still a little young for that. Uh, my daughter is 10, 11 now. She understands a little bit. The boys couldn't care less. They're, they're, they're doing their own thing. They're seven and nine, and they're loving sports. Um, my daughter understands it a little bit. Um, I'm not me. sure, but she'll never play basketball. She's more into tennis, okay. so maybe she can you know, find her that. own path mm -hmm. there. But, and she doesn't really love, she doesn't like, like the attention at all. When we go out somewhere, people want to take photos. She just rolls her eyes, walks away, <laughs> she can't stand. The boys think it's super cool. And, and they Malika, jump in the Malika picture with you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. And like hates it, so they're just different different personalities. But yeah, we'll see what, what they make out of their journey. I, uh -huh. My parents always supported whatever I wanted to do. When I started basketball, they weren't huge fans, but they are like, sure, go ahead. I wanted to play handball, tennis. So I kind of want to do the same. I don't mm. want to force them to do anything. If, uh, if they want to do gymnastics, she does some track and field. Try everything, and then, then just tell me what, what you like most, what your passion is, and, and then you'll, you'll find your own way. But I'm not going to push them into, into anything. You know, they can, they can make their own path. Mm -hmm. uh, I know we have to wrap, but before we do, uh, off of, on the table for you, if you'd ever like to go to a Champions League game, we're very happy to hook you up. If you want to go and see Arsenal lose to Bayern, tickets are on us. Sweet. She's doing. <laughs> She's just, I thought you I were about that. to say something else. No. I thought you were going to say the offer's on the table if you ever want to hear my track, because you looked at me. No. <laughs> I was like, Damn. Yeah, so Champions League, anything you ever need, oh, sweet. we got Thank you. you. I can yeah, host sure. you, you know, so we, I can take you over and make sure. You have to. Yeah, somebody yes. has to. <laughs> I have to help you out, you know, sure. be the facilitator. Yeah. I got hey, you. Hey, they ain't going to give you no credentials. <laughs> <laughs> Mo can barely get a credential to the conversation. <laughs> <laughs> It's wild. Rough time. <laughs> Rough time. Hard time. Oh, Hard man. time. We do appreciate you coming yeah, to and making sure. the time Thank for us you in your guys. hometown. Thanks Thank you so much. Yeah, so fun. God bless you. Can I give you a hug? Thank yes. you. Oh, Thank appreciate you. you. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Thank you guys. So fun. Nice to meet you guys. Nice to meet you, bro. Yeah. Thank you for watching. If you liked this episode of Kicking It, then don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to enjoy more raw and unfiltered content from me and the boys.